cookie. I love cookies. And it's the last one. Ooh, hey. a cookie. I love cookies. I wanted that cookie. Wait, I need this cookie. Um, wait, is that for me? Yeah, it's all the kids from All Souls. It's all the kids from All Souls. Wow. So glad to see you. I was just doing a little work over here on my computer and, um, well, Bill and I were just having a little bit of a conflict, you know, an argument over a cookie. But I really am glad to see you. I'm so glad that you've come back. It's perfect timing. Right, Bill? Perfect timing. Yeah, it's perfect. So, here we are, week three of the quarantine, and I have a feeling that we are not the only ones that have had some conflict in our houses, right? Have any of you all had any conflict or any arguments in the house with people that you've been living with? You know, conflict and having arguments is completely normal, especially during hard times or when we can't get away from each other, right? Having conflict is normal. I'm sure that you all have had some conflicts in your houses too. Families and people living together do that. We can't really control our feelings, you know, like we talked about last week. Glad, sad, mad, or scared. They're just feelings, not good or bad. They just are. And it's kind of the same with conflict. We can't really control whether we have conflict or arguments, but we can control how we handle them. Good conflict leads to us understanding each other better. Bad conflict only wastes our time and our energy and keeps us from being able to play outside and have fun and be creative. What do you know about arguing or conflict? Does it feel good to argue? No, not usually. Is it fun to argue? No, not usually, but it is normal. Conflict happens when people have needs that can't be met at the same time. Like when Bill and I both felt like we needed this cookie and it was the last one left. Sometimes, when we all can't get what we need, there's going to be conflict. And so, we have to learn to work through the conflict. How to have arguments where we end up understanding each other better and living together better. But do you know what else? Not every argument is about something we need. Sometimes, we end up arguing over things that we just want. And when we have arguments like that, it ends up just wasting our time and our energy. So how do we know the difference between what we want and what we need? Let's see. What about this cookie? Did I need the cookie? No, exactly. I wanted the cookie. What about water? Do we all need water? Yes, we all need water. What about a house or a safe place to live? Yes, we all need a safe place to live. What about a new bike or AirPods or the exact right color of crayon in the exact right moment? Yep, those aren't things that we need those are things that we want. What we need are things that help us to live better, be safe, and be healthy. Now, sometimes what we think we need and what we think we want can get confused. How many of you all have parents working from home right now? Now, do you need your parents' love and attention? Yes, 
Yes, you do. But your parents also need to be able to get their work done. So yes, of course, even when we have things that we need, we have to be patient in order to get them. And patience can be hard, especially when we have big feelings. Sometimes we have to be patient even when we have big feelings until the right time. Do you know who has something to say about the difference between wants and needs? The answer won't surprise you. Yep, Jesus. I wanna tell you a little bit about what Jesus says about things that we want or things that we need. So, in the book of Matthew, Jesus talks about things that we want and things that we need. Jesus talks about the birds of the air. Jesus says, the birds of the air are so beautiful and I take good care of them. If I take good care of the birds of the air, won't I also take good care of you? There's a bird there right now. Jesus also talks about wildflowers and Jesus says, look at the beautiful wildflowers. They don't worry about what they're going to wear and yet they're totally beautiful. If I take good care of the flowers and clothe them so beautifully, won't I also make sure that you have exactly what you need? What Jesus is trying to tell us there is that when we trust that God will take care of the things that we need, we can focus on what God gives us and then we can give back to others. When we are all in one place for a long time together, it will be normal to argue. But if we put our attention and our trust in God that we will have everything that we need, we can refocus our attention on giving to others and making sure that the people who maybe don't have everything they need, we can be there to help them. And then also, we can share with people when we have all that we need. Like, for example, this cookie. Bill, would you like part of this cookie? Sure, thanks. Bill, take and eat. This cookie is for you. Kids, I'm so glad that we got to see each other again today. I still miss you a lot, and I miss church, and I love you, and love is something we all need.